How good would uh, Shohei Otani look in pinstripes? Man, he, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm praying that, that, that he comes to the Bronx. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, he's the best baseball player I've ever seen. Mm. Like, this is the best that the players have ever been right now. And it's not even close. He hits the ball the furthest. He throws the ball the, the, the hardest. He runs the fastest. He's literally the best player we've ever seen at a time when the players are the best. So, yeah. All right, we got a baseball guest today. Kyle reeled this this one in, man. Uh, we were at the Drake party in, uh, at the Super Bowl, and the two biggest guys in the house were having a conversation. One of them played in the MLB. One of them played in the, in the NFL. Uh, this is CeCe Sabathia, the best baseball player we've ever had on. So thanks for coming on, CeCe. What's going on, fellas? Thanks for having me. We were just telling the story before we went on live. We were in the airplane hangar, and I saw you in the corner, and it was my first real-life recruiting pitch. I was like, we got to get you on the Greenlight Podcast, so I'm glad we can make this happen. Oh, yeah, no no problem. Man. Well, I, I said, I told Kyle, I was like, I'm a huge fan of your dad, so yeah. inadvertently I became huge fans of you guys, like watching your careers the whole time, you know, just wow. being a Raiders fan. So, you know, I, I followed the both of you guys. So That's it's damn awesome cool, to be on man. here. No, I, I heard you were a Raiders fan, man. What do you think of the new stadium? Have you been out there yet? I have. The stadium is awesome. And it's, uh, we've never, like, as a Raider fan, we've never had our own thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we were playing in the L.A. Coliseum when I grew up. Then it was the shitty Oakland Coliseum mm-hmm. as I got older. But now to have, like, our own stadium and see Raiders shit everywhere, it's actually really cool. Have you been in the black hole? I have not yet. I haven't yet. I'm, <laughs> I, I've, I've been sitting up in the suites. They got like this little suite level where yeah. they got like the recliner chairs. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the We've got a lot of connections there. there. We've got a lot of connections <laughs> with people that love us and people that hate us from when we play. Yeah. Do you guys get hate from like the Raider fans? Like, uh, I think them? I don't think so. I don't think so, man. You know, I think Pops did such a good job there. They always show us love, man. It's cool, like, running into Raiders fans, man. Like, a lot of them I met when I was a kid, probably, you know, walking around with my dad in the concourse and that sort of thing. So, now, when we were kids, CC, like, my dad was, was said when they played at the old Coliseum in Oakland or whatever it was, uh, whatever you called it, um, there were a couple games that, like, you know, for a stretch there, my mom wasn't allowed to bring me as a little kid just because <laughs> you know, they got so rowdy. And then, yeah. you know, like, honestly, it was like more in the NFL when we go to like play at Candlestick, because that was still really rough. I wouldn't let my wife go in Rams gear. Oh, so, really? But Candlestick was, was rowdy like yeah, that? Yeah, dude. Anything in the Bay. Like, oh, you, wow. You, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I didn't yeah. know that about Niner fans. I just thought it was in the, in the East Bay. But I wouldn't take my, my 19-year-old now, he's a freshman in college, I wouldn't take him until he was like 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. So for the first couple of years, and then I would sit on the visiting side. Yes. So, it, no weed smoke. It's no fight. <laughs> no contact <laughs> high. No shit going on. <laughs> like, we got to sit on the visiting side. But he didn't go to his first game until he's probably like 10 or 11 just because of the rowdiness. I just imagine growing up as as your son, and obviously he's an athlete and he's doing his thing now, and uh, we understand how that goes as, as sons of a ball player. Um, are there any funny stories that stick out to you when it was kind of like he realized who you were when he was around – the guys that you played with? Um, I, I think uh, like being at, at when I came to the Yankees, um, because uh, he was, he was always around. I had him when I was 23. So I would bring him to the clubhouse all the time. He was always around in Cleveland, all these, you know, all these different places. He came in a lot in Milwaukee, but when we got to New York, I think he kind of realized like, Oh, that's a rod. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was, he was <laughs> five or six at the time. And he was like, Oh, that's Derek Jeter. And he would follow Robbie Cano everywhere. Yeah. So Joe Girardi was our manager at the time and he had a young kid and we all had kind of young kids at the time. So we, we were allowed to bring our sons into the clubhouse every day. So by, from time Lil C was five until he was like nine or 10, he went to the park with me every single day. So he could, he could take ground balls with the guys, follow the guys around, hang out in the locker room. Um, but not until we got to New York did he realize, like, oh, this shit is pretty cool. I think my dad is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because we, you know, I was pretty young, and um, I can remember faintly sitting on the kitchen counter and Bo Jackson in the kitchen, you know, with my dad. And, and it's like, it's like, what, how did I not appreciate that moment? You know, like, I can remember late, 
late in my career being like, dad, how come you never let me meet Barry Sanders? And he was like, you did meet Barry Sanders, you know? <laughs> and part of that was downplaying what he did, like, you know, because he wanted to keep us grounded. So it was like, hey, I'm just going to work. I'm taking my son to work. Did you feel like you kind of did that even though you brought him around a lot? Like, was it important to keep him grounded? Yeah, it's, it's super important to keep. I got four, so all yeah. of them grounded. Yeah. Um, but the oldest for sure, you know, because I think he get he got to saw get to see everything. Like he was, you know, he kind of grew up with me and Amber in the mm -hmm. game. So, you know, he he was there for the World Series. He was there in the celebrations and all on the parade float and all yeah. those different things. So, um, I mean, get, having those experiences was great for him. And you know, him wanting to be a ball player, and motivating him, and you know, I, I know that's all that's in his mind. Yeah. Um, but it was good to be able to be with him every single day so that we could have conversations about keeping him grounded and different things like, Hey, this is not normal. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's not normal things that a nine or 10 year old get to do. So, you know, yeah. appreciate this and take advantage of it. Uh, he's at Georgia tech now. He's at Georgia tech. Yeah. ACC guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. First baseman. Plays first, yeah. Nice. Big kid. He's like six five, like two forty five, two fifty now. So all yeah. the best athletes play first base. Well, in right softball, I mean? not so much. I'm just fucking around. We, me and Kyle are on a softball team right now. Uh, we're kind of we're struggling. Last we night control we control the right side of the infield. Yeah, I'm second base. <laughs> I'm second base, so I can avoid any hard shots to the nuts, and I don't yep. throw my arm out. Uh, and then Kyle's at first base. So, um, so I got a question about football because. You know, you played, you were pretty good, right? You were tight end and, and you played almost played collegiate, collegiately. How close was that decision? Um, yeah, it was really close. I, that was my dream was to go to college and play uh, college football. Um, you know, kids like from my generation, my era, that was like our, like that was the only path to get to the NFL or the big leagues or yeah. whatever was to go through college. So me, I wanted to go play at UCLA. I wanted to play tight end. Um, but just my financial situation, me and my mom, um, you know, living, you know, single mom at the time, my dad was, they had got divorced and my grandmother passed away in the middle of my senior year. So it was just kind of me and her and she was, you know, single income and I get drafted in the first round and it's like, I hit the lottery. Like I had to take that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like get drafted 19th pick. And it was kind of like baseball chose me. It didn't give me a chance to even pick. It was like, this is here, this is presented. Like we need the money, honestly. And I felt like I was young enough. I was 17 when I got drafted. I was like, I can do this for three or four years. And if it don't work out, I can go back and play college football. I, Chris Winkie was just doing the same shit at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, that's a perfect example. Like, I can go back. So let me give this a try. And, um, you know, it ended up working out. But it was, it was one of those things where baseball just kind of chose me on the path where I had to take that, you know, first round money because of me and my mom's situation. Winky is a fucking unit, dude. Yes. Yes. He's, a little hey, bit, he's a little bit too old for me to appreciate. Buddy, he coached right me. Life. He coached me in St. Louis, and he was bigger than the D D ends, dude. He was a big yeah. guy. How much money was it, CC, when you when you at a seventeen year old kid like you? You know, how much money's in your bank account all of a sudden? How hard is it to manage? You know, like everybody wanting something and and just you know tickets and the whole thing. Yeah, it was hard. So I, I signed, I was a 19th pick. I got $1.3 yeah. uh, million. Dollars. And, you know, obviously growing up situation, I grew up, I grew up in the, in the ghetto, I grew up in the hood and it was like, everybody wanted a piece, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This AAU basketball coach, this, you know, baseball coach I played for when I was 10 and the church and you know what I mean? Like it was, <laughs> it was so many people. Church needs so a check, many, man. The church needs a check. We got a, we got a building fund, like mm -hmm. a fucking, we need a new parking lot. We need, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so it was, uh, pastor needs a new, hard. a new, uh, Aston Martin. Yeah. Now, now, Chris, I gotta, I gotta ask him about this. So yeah. you're 17 at the time you're, you're coming into $1.3 million. You have an advisor, I'm assuming not an agent because you can't have an agent right at the time. I didn't have an agent. No. So I just had an advisor. My mom was actually my agent. My mom did the deal. So my mom looked in baseball America and saw what the 19th pick got a year before. Mm. And I think it was like nine seventy five. And she was like, give us over a million and he'll, he'll sign. And wow. They gave us one. Dan O'Dowd gave us 1.3 and I was gone the next day. You've only got smart women around you because yeah. your wife is an agent as well. And yeah. we saw the Jalen hurts deal not too long ago. Nicole, Nicole Lynn, Lynn yeah. was in the forefront. How do you feel about seeing all these women at the forefront of all these men's sports? And uh, how's your wife enjoying it? No, I love it. I think, you know, it's it's the perfect role for my wife. I mean, obviously, like I just said, we grew up in this game together. 
And she's seen everything, all of my contracts. She went through all of them. She, you know, did all of my marketing stuff off the field when I got to New York. Um, she was my contact, my day-to-day, -day, everything. So I think a lot of these wives don't give themselves enough credit where they can do this agent job because they're in our yeah. lives and, and managing us every single day. So I saw how good my wife was at managing me, and I was like, this is what you need to be doing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you can do this at a high level. And, you know, she took it serious. She's got her degree. She graduated from college while we were young. And, um, you know, she took the agent's test and she's loved it. I mean, this is her life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, she's been living this for the last 25 years. So it's nothing new to her. You know a little bit about the football lifestyle in the NFL, like the way we travel, the amount of games we have, the way our practices, our meetings are. It's like, a, it's kind of a grind. We, we get treated like kids. Like mm -hmm. we got a curfew on the road and shit. Um, you know, like what's the difference between, you know, like I, I always wondered how awesome it would be to play cards on the, on the plane and, you know, be one city the next and go out to dinner the night before every time. Is that kind of how it is in baseball? Uh, what's the road like? The road is nuts, man. It's crazy, but they just turn you loose. Yeah. So like, like me and imagine being a 17 year old and they just, throw me in North Carolina. Like I, I, the first place I went was uh, Burlington, North Carolina. Like, didn't know how to wash clothes, didn't know how to do <laughs> shit, just throw you out there. Yeah. No whole family, no nothing. Like, mm -hmm. figure it out. Mm -hmm. you know With a saying? live you're, fastball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you're professional now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I was used to going home and, like, my mom washing my uniform after the game. Like, I go home in my uniform after the game. Like, yeah. now I got to, like, shower shoes. I got to take a shower at the stadium. Like, I got to figure all this shit out. So, it's a little, it's a little tough at the beginning, just figuring out how to be a pro yeah. because coming from high school, you have no fucking idea how to, how to be a pro. So I couldn't imagine being 17, 18, going to the NBA and actually being in NBA arenas. Like at least I got to go to the minor leagues where there were other 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds around to kind of help me teach me. Um, but I moved up the ranks pretty fast. So as I got through, you know, through the minor leagues, I was in double A after my first year. So I went from, I was an 18 year old and there were 25 year olds in my locker room. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so you were a baby. In the I was a baby. Those, room. those guys drinking beers after the, after the game and shit, I'm yeah. following my mom, like some old motherfuckers on this team. Like, <laughs> beers and shit after the game. I don't yeah. know what the fuck to do, but yeah. it's, it's fun. It's fun being on, you know, being kind of being cut loose and, and just learning how to, you know, manage being on the road. But yes, yeah, it's, it's Every single night, you know, I, w I was just talking to Anthony Volpe. He's the shortstop uh, for the Yankees right now. And every night on the road, you know, they either go to Rizzo's room or Judge's room, playing video games all night, hanging out, and just kind of doing whatever you want to do. All you got to do is just make sure that you up and, and at the park for stretch the next day, which is probably like 4.15. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, like most of the stretch are late in the day. So, like, well, uh, guys, guys hit the streets the night before a little bit. Like yeah. I was kind of wondering I, in high school one time I went out and got drunk and then the next day I hit two bombs and I was like, you know what? <laughs> Playing hung over, it kind of works. Like, I don't know if there, is there a, is there a, is, <laughs> is there like a, any talk, it, you know, among players that like some guys are like, Hey, I like playing hung over. Some guys are like, I need my eight hours. How much does it range? You know, like guys routines on the road. Are there some guys that just That's shut the door? No, that's just the older generation like us, like our generation. That's how we play. Like yeah. the David Wells and David Cones and those guys, they love hitting the road or, or hitting the streets the night before and having a little, you know, being a little hungover so they can, they said they made them concentrate a little more. Yeah, and, and hey, I subscribe to that shit too. That yeah. was me in my yeah. career. I'm going out. Like yeah. me and Mark Burley, we pitched against each other so much. He was in with the White Sox and I was in Cleveland. Yeah, I remember we him. Go yeah. out the night before and get drunk and see who can last the longest in the game. <laughs> That's amazing. Who lasted longer? Who, who won more? He would, he would always, he would always get me. <laughs> that's good, man. Oh, that's funny. Um, so like the, the, the plane rides, you guys are, I know I saw guys get a ton of money taken playing boo yeah, in the NFL. Yeah. How ugly did it get for some dudes on the planes in the MLB? Yeah, it gets nasty on the planes, man. It just depends on the team. Um, but you you know when you walk into the environment of like this is a gambling yeah. a gambling team. What my, my Yankee teams early in my career, like 09 to 12, we had some big, you know, some big gambling boo ray pots. Um, but the the team I was on in Milwaukee in 2008, we gambled like crazy and and it and it got out of control pretty quick. Uh one time in 
One time in 2009, we were playing Blu-ray, and I, I won a $46,000 pot. <laughs> and it was a kid that was a rookie. I didn't. I didn't make him pay. Oh, that's so good of you. I was pissed. Cut him a deal. I still get. I still get shit from that. Like people that were on that team still give me shit. I, I can't take forty six thousand dollars from a guy that's a rookie, man. That's he better I'm send up. you a fucking Christmas gift every year. Well, if he hit <laughs> it big, if one. this guy hit it big in the majors, I feel like you could come back for that money, but. He, he didn't. Oh, so okay, well, that was good. Like, that was good. Was good. <laughs> that's I just good. want a Christmas card. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> Every year. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can the guys in the MLB still dip? Is that a thing? Like, what did they do with the the dip and that sort of thing? Um, you know what? I, I, I honestly don't know. The last year that I played, I was still dipping. Yeah. But I don't know if there's a rule. Maybe you, you can't dip like out in the dugout. I don't yeah. think. What was CC Sabathia's dip of choice? It was always uh, Copenhagen uh, mint, okay. always. Yeah, um, okay, good. But it was, uh, I mean, I, it was two cans a day, though. Yeah, it, got, it gets out of control if you're sitting two around Two cans a, lot. a day. And, yeah. I could, and I didn't, um, I haven't had a dip since the last day I played. Very oh, good last for you. game, I threw in the dip, and then the baby, the, the, I was in the bullpen, had a dip in that day, and that was the last time I've had a dip. Good for you. Jeez. I'm two. It's, it's, I'm two months clean. You're I'm on this, amazing. I'm on this Zen, nice. dude. I'm on this Zen. You got to get on the Zen it. train. Um, oh, is it? It's a, it's a new kind of dip. It's, it's like uh, it's like a nicotine pouch. There's nothing it's like bad a in Swedish, it. Swedish high powered. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like a little uh, gets all the you joy. Know why? Because I, I, I miss it when I'm fishing. I fish a lot, and yeah. that's the only time like that I miss like when I'm I, I miss throwing a dip in. Where, what do you like to fish for? Uh, redfish and snook. Okay, so you go out down in the ocean. Florida. Yeah, yeah, down yeah. in Florida in, in the in the endless, or I'll go down to Venice, Louisiana. Yeah, get some redfish down there. Nice. Okay, so before we got into baseball, like now, I you know, like I saw you at the at the Knicks game. I'm a Knicks fan, um, and I was like, oh, we got him on the pod tomorrow. Uh, that how exciting is it right now in New York? And like when it's buzzing, you know, you've been a part of some great teams. There were other, you know, the Rangers, the Knicks rolling. Um, you got your, your jets and the, and the Mets and all that stuff. But like, what's it like when, when New York is, is buzzing? It was special. It's special. But this is a basketball town. Yeah. This is a basketball city. And these, this town loves the Knicks, it, but it's just, they haven't had nothing to cheer for, for a long time. Right. But going to the garden last night, it was electric. Like yeah. you going into the garden as a visiting player, you have to account for the noise and the crowd and the atmosphere of Madison Square Garden. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the garden is a fucking star. And it it was crazy last night. The amount of people that showed up and when this when this when the sports is good in this town, it's nothing like it, man. I yeah. mean, but even more so when the Knicks are good. Like I couldn't even get out on fucking 34th Street last night. Like People just won in the street. I mean, you would have thought they won a championship. Yeah. Like they won one game without Jimmy Butler out there. Without Jimmy Butler. But yeah. these fans are starving for the Knicks to win. And if they ever get to the Eastern Conference Finals or even the Finals, man, it's going to be insane here. How about celebrities, man? Like, I know you, you, you get so many famous people that are Yankees fans and fans of you and that sort of thing. Was there anybody that you were like starstruck to meet that loved the Yankees uh, in your tenure? Um, I think the, the Denzel Washington. Oh, he's a, yeah. He's a Yankees fan. He's a big Yankees fan. Oh, that's he's so a, cool. and he, know, he knows a lot of Yankees history, you yeah. know? So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. You know, I always love talking to fat Joe about, about yeah. baseball because he grew up in the Bronx and yeah. he grew up and he worked at a bodega right around the corner from Yankee stadium. Okay. So a lot of those old guys would come in his bodega on the way to the stadium. So he's got stories of, you know, all these different guys that came through the Bronx in the seventies and eighties that he worked at the bodega that he got to see like playing for the Yankees. So he's got some cool stories. How good would uh Shohei Otani look in pinstripes? Man. He, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm praying that, that, that he comes to the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think everybody's, you know, got him going to the Dodgers and I think, uh, you know, the Dodgers held back, um, this off season from signing guys to maybe sign him. But I've said, I got to caught a lot of flack for saying this shit, you know, three years ago, but he's the best baseball player I've ever seen. Mm. Like this is the best that the players have ever been right now. And it's not even close. Guys are throwing a hundred, two hundred fucking five miles an hour. And he's the best player. Yeah, He hits the ball, the furthest he throws the ball, the, the, the hardest he runs the fastest. He's literally the best player we've ever seen 
at a time when the players are the best. So, yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I watched him play one inning of one game and I said, Oh shit, this guy's fucking, he's, yeah. the, he's the best I've ever seen. It's incredible. What, so what stands out? You named all the, th you named all, all the, the tools. tools. Yeah. yeah. So six tool players. What, what's the sharpest one on his like spider web? Like what's the furthest one from normal? I think that the pitching, because he's getting better as a, as a pitcher. Yeah. If you just watch him, like he's going to be close to winning the Cy Young. Like what happens if he wins the Cy Young and hits 40 fucking homers in the season? What are they going to you know say? What, I'm saying? what happens if he wins the Cy Young and hits 20 homers in the season? Yeah. Like nobody's ever fucking done that yeah. before. Yeah. Like I think he's getting better as a pitcher and his hitting is going to be his hitting. He is what he is. He's six, six, 250 fucking pounds. Like he's going to always be able to hit. But at like as a starter, him being able to go seven, eight, nine innings and fucking dominating games like that, like it's it's, it's crazy. Have you been to a, a game in Japan? <laughs> I haven't, man. I was supposed to go to the World Baseball Classic uh, this year, and it, I got my my trip got canceled. But I'm I'm looking forward to seeing. I want to see him in Japan. Yeah, I want to see that too. We should just yeah, we should like all go in on the oh, charter yeah, so go. we don't have yeah. to go. Internet. We can just do right. one. I can pitch in. Boom, go watch and, Shohei <laughs> throw nine and hit two bombs. Yeah, I got to clear that It'll with my wife. It. It'll yeah. Be worth it. Um. So why you said guys are throwing like 105 now that sort of thing and you know um one of the you, you, well I got two fucking powerful pitchers on here. Kyle was a lefty throwing what 96. Kyle. Uh, I mean, I don't know. If yeah, you playing humble, uh, but now now guys are throwing. You said it like it's 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 otherworldly. How did it get there? You know, because like it's not like human beings evolved in the past twenty years. Like, what yeah. was it about technique or training or or you know, like what was it that made guys get more velocity and movement? Guys, they're teaching velocity now. Yeah. Whereas, like when we grew up, they didn't teach us velocity. You just had to be able to throw hard, yeah. right? Like. Now they have the weighted ball programs and all these different things where they can teach you velocity. Like I can take my 12 year old right now and take him in, in, in five years, I can make him throw 90 miles an hour. Yes. That don't mean I, he's he going to know where the fucking ball is going. Right. Yeah. So that's why now it's a lot less pitchers and a lot more throwers. Mm, yeah. The guys are more like mid relievers yeah. and less like long starters where yeah. they go out for four or five innings, throw the ball as hard as they can. And then they get the next guy to do that. You Got know it. what I mean? Yeah. But if you watch the teams that actually win and go deep into the playoffs and win the World Series, they have three or four actual starters. Horses. Six, seven innings in the game, and then their bullpen is rested, and they're not using their bullpen in April like they use it in October. I think that's how some of these teams that, that build super bullpens, even the Yankees, we've done that the last couple of years, where <laughs> we build these super bullpens, and then you take the starter out in the sixth inning the whole season – and now you're using this formula where six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. These guys have to be perfect for you to win a game. Yeah. So you know, it, it, it's. I think it's going to change back though. But you're leaning on Plan B as opposed to coming with your strongest Plan A. Yeah, I mean, if your starter is is the, the best guy. I, I would always tell Girardi this. He would he would come out and he'd be like, "Hey, I got somebody warming up." Well, I'll be like. Me at 90 pitches is better than whoever the fuck you got out there warming up. Yeah. Unless it's Mariano. Yeah. Unless it's Mo. Yeah. You ain't bringing nobody else in. Unless you know what I'm saying? Metallica. Because me at 95, 100 pitches is better than that middle reliever. I don't give a fuck who it is. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have superstitions as a pitcher? I know it's like y'all are highly superstitious athletes. Uh, what were the weirdest superstitions in the clubhouse and did you have any? Uh... I mean, it, there was a lot. I think baseball players are, are highly superstitious. I yeah, mean, me, different. <laughs> the day that I pitched, I always had to eat the same breakfast. My wife had to make me the same breakfast every day. It was uh, grits, eggs, potatoes, and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> a real <laughs> breakfast. Morning. Yeah. When I was younger, I didn't eat breakfast. I would just go, before I went to the game, I would go to Wendy's and get a big bacon classic and two fries and a Sprite. Oh. That's what I would pitch on. <laughs> I was pitching on that. That's great. <laughs> That's so, great. That sounds delicious. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so all my superstitions revolved around time. Like yeah. I had to be in the hot tub at a certain time. I had to be on the training table getting scraped at a certain time. My hitters meeting had to start at a certain time. I walked like I put on my uniform, button up the last button at the, at the, at, at like, it was five, uh, six 36 for a seven, seven o'clock game. And at six 38, I had to be walking out of the locker room. Mm -hmm. Like So it was just all about time with me, but like, G Derek, like Jeter, he had superstition where he would eat the same thing every day. Yeah. Peanut butter and honey sandwich every single day. Um, he would go to Starbucks every single day. It's just guys that like, because we play every day, 
You know what I mean? It just kind of becomes a part of your routine. So I heard Derek described, um, I worked with somebody, one of my PTs had worked with him and just raved about him as a guy, but they said he's the most regular person. Like he's super down to earth. Like you would not know that he was one of the most famous athletes on the planet for, for a, a period of time. Uh, was, is that accurate? And what kind of guy was he day to day? Yeah, just a regular dude, man. I mean, still to this day, I mean, that's the, that's the best way to describe him. Um, and I, for me, I think, you know, I, I like to people, I like people to get to know his personality because people always say he's dry. He don't really give you nothing. The dude's hilarious. Like if you know him and you're around him, he talks a lot of shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he gets on people a lot and, and, uh, he's just fun to be around, but he is the most regular, you know, superstar that I've ever been around. Like guy that's, you know, gets recognized everywhere, but he's just a normal guy. His family's like that too. His sister's really cool. Part of our family, his mom and his dad. I'm really close with his nephew. So, um, you know, our families are really close. There's so many great nicknames in sports. You know, I'm thinking of the sheriff and uh, all these guys, but the captain is like, yeah, that's a good that's one. gotta be the best one, right? Yeah. yeah it, it, and, it, and it means so much because it's the captain of the Yankees. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the, the history of the Yankees kind of coincides with the history of baseball. So to be a captain of, you know, the Yankees and now Aaron Judge, you know, having that title is, is super cool to see. And and how's your relationship with Aaron Judge? It seems like you guys are really cool. Uh, I've, I've followed a little back and forth between y'all. What's it like uh, seeing a guy like that kind of seems like the perfect face of a franchise? Yeah, man, he's always been the same. You know, he's yeah. the same regular guy down to earth. Um, I remember the very first day I met him it was at the Oakland Coliseum. He had just got drafted. He came in with his parents and just a, a mountain of a dude. You know yeah. what I mean? You're like, holy shit. Like, yeah. if he could ever put it together, I mean, it's going to be incredible. And, you know, him coming up through the ranks in that, that very first year, I think it was 2016 when he came up, hit a home run his first at bat, and then he struggled. But then he came back at 17 and ended up hitting 50. So just watching him evolve and, you know, the, how much he cares about being out there and posting every day and, you know, taking care of his body so that he can play center field. Yeah. You know, he really cares about, you know, winning and, and going out and trying to win a ball game every single day. That's the thing that he's most focused on. Now taking care of your body is obviously paramount. And I, I deteriorated quickly in the NFL because I had six, six surgeries and five seasons end on IR. I got a broken neck leg, all that shit. Um, you had to deal with the length of a career going from a 17 year old to a 40 year old playing in the MLB. You were a physical gift of God. Uh, like when you first came out, your, your arm is just like nothing you've ever seen. And by the end, you have to kind of reinvent yourself. That process is a lot tougher than just saying, okay, I'm a different guy. Now walk me through that. Yeah. No, nah, I wish that I had, the work ethic that I had when I was 30 that I had when I was 17, I wish somebody would have took me to the weight room and been like, Hey, like you're going to have this long career. You go, you know, if yeah. you can avoid all of these different injuries, knee, all this different stuff. If you, if you do a little work at the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I did, I, you guys, I did no fucking work when I was young. Like I was just a big guy. I was, you know, a kid and I was, I was just gifted, like you yeah. said. So I felt like I didn't need to work. You know what I'm saying? And at the time when I first came up, it was the steroid era. So the way I saw it, all the guys that were working out were on steroid. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right, right. All the guys that were like, nor like normal body were just doing it like me, where they mm -hmm. come into spring training, get ready. And, you know, I did that for as long as I could um, until I started having the knee problems and, I, you know, pulling my oblique around 25, 26. And, got into a little better routine. Um, but I just, I, I wish I had that foundation, um, earlier, you know, uh, so, so that I, I could have sustained, I mean, I, I ended up playing 19 years, but it was, it was a struggle, you know, have, I think I had ended up having nine knee surgeries, elbow surgery, toe surgery, different things in the middle of my career that I could have avoided had I been, you know, as disciplined as I am now, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. With my diet and everything, you know, doing, doing the early part of my career. Cause I would be pitching sometimes at 335, 
330. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was. Bro, I got to 352, and it's a different light. It's a different planet we're living on when you're yeah. above 325. It's like the Earth treats your body differently. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it really I is, can see man. it, Kyle. <laughs> When you were big, I'd see you in the tunnel after the game. I was like, God damn, little bro. Like, everything was just thicker. Man. Why are you, you breathing so loud? Because you can carry it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh huh. You carry it so you just feel fine with yeah. it. Like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. But like, nah, that shit takes a toll on you, man. And now you're lean. Like, I saw you at the Drake show and I was like, God damn, that's CeCe right there. He looks great. <laughs> I was like, first I thought you were at DN or somebody I played against. Mm -hmm. And then. Obviously, we spoke, but it's uh, it's fabulous to see where you're at. I'm in a better routine. You know what I mean? Like, the baseball life ain't taking its toll anymore. I'm not getting home at midnight and eating after the games and, you know, waking up at – I would wake up at, like, this time now, like 1230 yeah. for a 7 o'clock game. So, you know, now I'm going to bed on time. I'm in bed by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I'm at the gym every morning. Just left the gym right now. Like, I'm in a, a good routine. The food is good, and I feel so much better. And you know, I mean, I got four kids. I want to see my grandkids. I want to want to be around for a long time, man. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm really into this health 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 thing right now. So I want to be as lean and and uh, healthy as possible right now. Was it frustrating? Because like in the NFL, there's a bunch of guys on some shit, but guys don't talk about it. And I was naive, thinking everybody else out here is just working as hard as I am. But then I'd see some of these guys' bodies, and I was like, damn, dude, you know, there's no way. I, I, I'm doing everything I can. Like, was it – in baseball, it seems like a little bit more open. Were guys talking about it, like, in the in the clubhouse, like, you know, sharing tips or that sort of thing? And was it frustrating to face guys that you knew were not natural? It wasn't – it wasn't a secret. It yeah. wasn't a secret. Um, no, I don't know, because I wasn't in those conversations. I don't know what they'll – like I wasn't in those circles, so yeah. I don't know what those conversations were. But I know I could walk by like lockers and see shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it wasn't a secret at all. And like you, I was super naive. I was like, I, I felt like these motherfuckers need something to face me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they had never seen nothing in the league like me. I'm six five, two hundred and seventy five pounds, throwing from the left side. Like yeah, y'all yeah, might need a little something to face me. So I yeah. always felt like, <laughs> you know, I felt good that I wasn't on anything. You know. Yeah. Like going against these guys that had that need a little help. So now I didn't. Bother. It's, yeah, I now, was young enough and naive enough to think that I was just as good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, now, did any of these uh, roided up guys ever charge the mound? Did anybody charge the mound on you? I I never got charged. Nah, I had surprise, no, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> not one time. Not one time. Could major league pitchers be like like obviously you were a great hitter at one point in your career, like whether it was when you were young or whatever, and then you take this path where you focus on pitching. And I know there's like Otani's out there. And um, I think, was it Ann Keel could hit? Um, yes, Rick but, Keel. But was. like, how many guys can actually, like if they had focused on hitting, how many major league hitters are there, pl pl you know, pitching? There's a lot. And there's a lot of of guys in my generation. Like you said, Rick and Keel was one of the guys, but like if, if, if those guys would have been able to like hone in on their hitting skills at like the same time as pitching, I don't think anybody would be a good, as good as Shohei. Yeah. No, no. Um, yeah. May, I mean, I'm trying to think of, a, of like Mike Hampton, you guys remember Mike yeah. Hampton? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really good hitter. Yeah. Um, Trying to think who else. Carlos Zambrano was yep. a switch hitter. He was a really good hitter. Yep. I'm just trying to Dontrell think about Willis, Bartolo Dontrell Willis. Cologne. Dontrell Willis, yeah. <laughs> Dontrell Willis, Bartolo. Bartolo got a home run. Yeah. <laughs> but, took a while uh, to get around the base. I, I think it would have been a couple of guys that could, that could do it at a yeah. high level, but I don't think anybody could do it like this guy's doing it, you know? Yeah. What, what do you think about the pitch clock, man? You know, a lot of people have made a big deal out of it. Um, some fans actually like the game longer, it turns out. Uh, you know, you having to go through that, um, you know, without the pitch clock, what do you, what do you see when you watch games now? And what are the challenges that people aren't thinking about with communication or technique or, you know, just execution for pitchers? Man, I love the pitch clock. Yeah. I wish they had that shit when I was playing. Nobody want to play fucking four hour games. You want to start a game at seven o'clock and get, get home at midnight yeah. or 1230. I watched the game the other night. It was it was the eighth inning. It was an hour and 45 minutes into the game. Yeah. It's perfect. Ooh. It's digestible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a product that we can watch. It's not like, and, and, and you're not missing action. Yeah. You're not missing anything. You're not missing anything at the late in the game. 
you know, is, is 15 to two games taking two and a half out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just getting rid of all the, the bullshit. It's the game that I watched growing up in the eighties and nineties. You yeah. know what I mean? Like just something that's two and a half, you know, maybe three hours. Um, and, and, and it's a lot of action, you yeah. know, like you, you seeing without the shift, you seeing, you know, balls getting through now you seeing diving, a lot more diving plays. Um, I, I'm really excited about the rule changes. Um, that we've that we've been seeing, and you know, you know, hopefully uh, the fans can hop on board. I mean, but I feel like there's more families going back to the ballpark now, especially early in the year. School's yeah. still in, but if a game starts at six o'clock and you know it's going to be over at eight thirty, you can take your kids to the game. You know what I mean? Like on a school night now, so there's more families. Attendance is up. Um, so I'm I'm really excited and happy about the rule change. I wish they had that shit my last year playing playing. Fucking Red Sox games, four and a half fucking hours on Sunday night baseball. <laughs> then you got to fly all the way to the West Coast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the Yankee schedule is so hard. Like people don't understand that our getaway days. Like so, tonight is a getaway day. Like the they're playing the Guardians tonight, and, and you know the Guardians fly away. Normally, getaway day is a day game. You play a day game because the team wants to get out. Well, not with the Yankees because you want to get all of that time. gate. Yeah, yeah you want to get all of that gate. You want to make sure as many people as possible come to the game. So we always get a night game. Yeah. So now having that game be in two hours makes a huge difference for us. One, one, that's, one, that's one, wild. one last question here. I, I, um, you know, unwritten rules are big in baseball. I, sometimes they make my head spin. I'm like, what the oh fuck? Why God. can't that guy do that? Like what? Fucking hate it. We got to, we can't pimp home runs. Like, but pitchers can fucking do all this shit when they strike somebody out. Like <laughs> I'm watching Madison Bumgarner. He's getting mad at people. I'm like, I'm like, bro, like what, what's the big deal? I mean, you're doing a whole routine when you strike somebody out. What, what are some of the unwritten rules that you think are just like garbage? All of them. I hate it all. Every single. It's, you know how hard it is I to hit a fucking guy. home run. If you hit a home run, bro, you should be able to walk the ba- the, the bases backwards. Yeah. Like the only people that get mad about celebrations are the motherfuckers that lose, mm-hmm. the pitchers that give up the home run, mm-hmm. the team that lost. Like mm-hmm. get off the fucking. The field. dad watching their kid from yeah, the game. Like, he can't do that. Celebrate. Yeah. Like uh-huh. if you don't want to see me celebrate, throw a better fucking pitch or play uh-huh. better. You I know what I'm saying? Like. Don't fucking good. lose. Don't I, lose. I love it. I love it. This is this is great. Uh, and I want to plug your podcast, man, because hopefully me and Kyle are going to be on there soon. It's R two C two, which is a Star Wars reference. We got May the Fourth yes. coming up. Um, it's R two C two with Ryan Rucco and uh, and me and Kyle. Hopefully, we'll get on there soon. Wh- who's your favorite Star Wars character for the people that are celebrating May Fourth? Oh, Yoda. I dressed up as Yoda my last year. I, that, they gave me a, a Star Wars bobblehead. I was a Jedi. Yeah. So I dressed up as Yoda and yeah. drove to the stadium and passed out fucking bobbleheads that day. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Star Wars is great. We love the Mandalorian in my house. Oh, yeah. my God. I just finished the the, the last season. It was incredible. I got to watch it. it. I, I got it uh, lined up. Yeah, you gotta watch it. Well, CC Sabathia, man, this has been really cool, man. One of the best. Loved watching you play, and uh, look forward to coming on your pod too. Uh, enjoy May the Fourth, okay, man? Oh, for sure, man. Appreciate you guys having me on. Always been big fans and big fan of your pods too. So thank you guys. Thank you, CC. Thanks, dude. Thanks yeah, for coming. Appreciate the time. Listen to the full podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, wherever you want to get the podcast, you can get the podcast. Pretty simple. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Podcasts get pretty wild. This is real tame.